Welcome back to New Record Day. My name is Ron, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing a complete and total breakdown of the SVS Ultras. You guys seem to really like the breakdown of the Bucart S400, so I thought, let's go ahead and do this again. And it does come with a disclaimer. Don't do this at home. This is something that I am very comfortable doing, and I am confident that I can take these speakers apart and put them back together again, and nothing's gonna break. It's gonna work just fine, so, there is a disclaimer, don't do this, let me do it, and just enjoy the show. So, SVS Ultra, breakdown, teardown, down to the skeleton, let's see what we got. Let's get started with the enclosure. Alrighty, so this guy is in the piano gloss white, and the finish looks great. Uh, that is the first thing that I wanna mention even though this is all objective, and I don't want to necessarily give too many opinions here about what we see or what we find. I do got to mention that the finish is rather impressive, especially at the asking price. And let's just start with the basics. So if we take a look, let me just see in my monitor here if you can see this. Yes, you can. It has these really cool curves right on the front of the baffle here, up where the tweeter is. And what I'll do in the review is I'll make sure that I I talk about this because I need to find out from SVS is if what I suspect is true and that is this is actually helping with diffraction. And so I will make sure that I talk about that when we get to the review. Uh, the speaker measures, speaker is just shy of 15 inches. I know that some of you folks want me to do metric. That's not gonna happen. I apologize, eight and a half inches wide and 10 inches deep. The uh, one thing that I noticed that's rather interesting with this guy is the front baffle, one inch thick. And the back baffle is, looks like right around three quarters inch. Same with the sides. And if we take a look in the woofer cavity, like the Bucard S400, we have some sheets of polyfill, is what it looks like here. And then if we take a look uh, at the top, we have another sheet of polyfill where the tweeter was. And this guy right here was back where the port was. So we have that piece. So now that we have the polyfill sheets out, I am noticing that there are some small corner braces. And it looks like we have a total of, in the back, but there's four. And then in the front, one, two, yeah, I can feel them, three, four. So total of eight braces just in the bottom section alone. They're smaller braces, but nevertheless, they're braces. Yeah, and then if I can show you, let me see if I can get the angle right. Oh yeah, right there. There's another brace there. So we got a kind of a cross section brace right above the woofer there. In the back, we do have a port, and one thing that I notice is that the port actually has, mm, it kind of feels like rubber. It's actually got a texture to it. It's not just your typical kind of cheapy looking plastic port. So just an observation, kind of an interesting feature. Let me go ahead and grab the woofer. Yeah, so here is the driver. This is the SVS Ultra woofer. If we take a look at the frame on the back, Definitely gonna be some kind of a die cast, probably aluminum is what my guess would be. And from what I can tell here, the motor structure looks substantial. And the material that is being used for the cone is a composite glass fiber. And that is the woofer for the SVS Ultra. This little beauty ring is what goes on top. So that's what we're used to seeing, right? This is not plastic. 
This actually seems like it might actually be made out of some kind of aluminum or or metal, which really surprised me. And then it has this soft foam on the back, obviously, so you're not causing any issues as you're pressing down on the actual frame of the woofer. There is the woofer, substantial, beefy. Let's check out the tweeter. And here is the tweeter that is inside the SVS Ultra bookshelves. And this guy is a one inch aluminum dome tweeter. It has got some heft and some weight, no doubt about that. And this plate right here, again, not plastic, has to be some kind of aluminum, metal for sure. And uh, yeah, that's the tweeter. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the crossover. All right, so the crossover is mounted on the back of the binding post, so we're gonna talk about both. And the binding posts are five-way binding posts. You have a pair of them, so if you wanna do bi-wire or bi-amping, uh, you would just simply remove these jumpers and you're ready to rock and roll. And then flipping this guy around, the, uh, the network is simple. I had to count twice because I was kind of surprised by this, but there are only five parts. We have one sand cast resistor, we have two inductors, we have one poly cap, and then we have one electrolytic cap. Super simple network, and that's it. So let's move on to the measurements. Alrighty folks, time to walk you guys through measurements. And I did all of these measurements. I work very hard at them. It does come with the disclaimer that I'm a reviewer. I am not an engineer. I have learned a lot about measuring and I feel like I do a pretty good job with it. But understand this, I can only take these so far. And this is just to show you what I got within my environment, with my hardware, with my software, and the equipment that I use, I will link down below. It is called Clio Pocket. And the type of measurements that we're gonna be focused on today are what's called a gated response. And what that means is we have the microphone one meter away from the speaker and we run a sweep to the speaker and we're trying to capture information within four milliseconds only. So anything that is gonna be before and after that four milliseconds, we don't want any of that information. We just wanna know what is the speaker doing? How is the speaker responding? And we do not want the room, namely the floor, ceiling, and walls, to be an influence, hence the four milliseconds. One other small disclaimer, and I'm really sorry about this. I don't know what the heck happened. I can't find my impedance sweep for the speaker. I don't know what I did with it. I've looked through all of my documents and it's MIA. So I'm very sorry, no impedance sweep. Let's get started. So the very first thing that we're gonna be taking a look at, which is on the screen over here, is the frequency response, which is in red. One thing that I wanna point out is that the scale window that we're looking at is in 5 dB increments. So if this looks, whoa, that's a lot more aggressive than what I was expecting, keep in mind, we are looking within a 5 dB window, whereas a lot of these manufacturers are looking at 10 dB or more. And so that line looks a lot smoother. So just a heads up on that. Either way, this is the frequency response that I got from 200 Hertz up to 20,000 Hertz. That leads me to answer another question that we got in the last video that I did, and I'm sure it's gonna come up again. Why 200 Hertz? Well, the answer is within a gated response, we're only capturing data for four milliseconds at one meter, and it would take much longer for bass to propagate. So. I can't collect any data below 200 hertz with this type of a measurement, and that's why. So from 200 hertz up to 20K, that's what I got on the SVS Ultras. Next thing that I want to take a look at is going to be the horizontal off access measurement. And what I do with this is with the microphone, um, I'm moving it off access uh, 10 degrees at a time. So the very first thing that we're gonna be taking a look at is what does the speaker look like as we move 10 degrees horizontal off axis, and that color is gonna be green. So that's what I got, little to no change there. And here is 20 degrees, which is gonna be orange. And here we have uh, 30 degrees, which is this uh, dark blue color. 
And the last, which is going to be 40 degrees, so pretty extreme, 40 degrees off axis, we have the purple line. And you can see that guy there at the bottom. All right, the next measurements that we're going to be taking a look at are vertical off axis measurements. So in this example, what we're doing is we are starting on axis with a speaker, but then we are moving the microphone up four inches at a time. And so for the very first vertical off axis measurement, we're gonna be moving the microphone up four inches, which is going to be the green line. And then again, we move the microphone up another four inches, so we're eight inches up, which is going to be the orange line. We move it up even further to 12 inches up, and that is going to be the dark blue line, which you can see here. And then we have 16 inches up, so pretty high up there, which is going to be the purple line. And the very last measurement that I want to go ahead and show you guys is what is known as a spectral decay or waterfall. Let me go ahead and pull that up. And again, this is of the SVS Ultras, the bookshelves. And there we go. That concludes our measurements. I hope that you enjoyed this breakdown video. I hope that you found this useful and interesting. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And we will see you guys in the next video.